Um, so thank you guys all for coming. My name is Allison Prismanis Hill, and um, this is my first time doing a workshop of lockdown. So uh, I'm certain that there are some uh, rocky points. So please feel free to interrupt me as we go. I'm expecting you guys to all be on a computer and working on this um, while I'm going. Uh, so if you guys, uh, if everybody sees the Wi-Fi password um, over on the, the pink sheet, so make sure you're connected. And um, if everybody could go to my GitHub. I have materials that you need in the blog down workshop repository. So if you just want to clone or download that, what you really need is this workshop bundle file. Um, and I have all the files that you're going to need for today listed in numerical order. Um, we'll remove the numbers as we go, but those are just so you can kind of help with sequencing to know where I'm at. Um, when we're talking about different files, because we're going to be moving files around a lot, and it's a little confusing. So uh, so just keep that somewhere where you can easily access it, and we'll be going back and forth between your uh, RStudio project, your blog down project, and then this directory. So I've tried to minimize the amount of typing that you will need to be doing on the fly in here so that you can focus, hopefully, more on what you're doing in, uh, in blog down. So, uh, go ahead and download that. I'll give everybody um, a couple seconds to do that while um, I, I can tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I'm a professor at Oregon Health and Science University. I'm in the Department of Pediatrics, and uh, I do research in the Center for Spoken Language Understanding. I'm an author researcher, uh, but I also uh, teach in the Computer Science Education Program at OHSU, which a lot of people don't know exists but there is a great computer science master's and PhD program there. Um, and I teach introductory statistics in that program. So I use R a lot for my own analyses when I'm doing research, but I also use it for teaching. So I'm a big R stats fan. Um, so is everybody kind of good with the GitHub workshop bundle piece? OK. Um, and if you guys looked at the pre-work uh, for the workshop, hopefully you guys have installed Blogdown. But Blogdown was also just recently released on CRAN this week. Um, so I wanted to make sure we're all using the same version of it. So I've tested all my workshop materials with the most recent version of Blogdown. So if you've um, used the DevTools version, installing from GitHub, just go ahead and download the version from CRAN if you could, so you make sure we're all using the same uh, version. Um, so install packages, Blogdown. Um, if you want to use the development version, I think right now there's probably not too much of a difference between the two, but you're welcome to just reinstall that and make sure that we're all working from the most up-to-date version of blog down because there are a few changes were made kind of in the past few weeks that um, may or may not impact things here or at least might impact you if you go further I have kind of at the end some more resources for you to look at um, and I know for certain that those did not work with the older version of um, blog down that was on uh, github well a couple weeks ago okay can everybody kind of give me like a, a thumbs up that you're good with this everybody's good so everybody has blog down installed OK, cool. Um, make sure that you install Hugo using Blogdown. Hopefully, you also did this before the workshop. But the, after you install the Blogdown package, you can use this helper function to install uh, the latest version of Hugo. You can also do an update Hugo if you want to force an update if it's been a while. Um, and you can also check your Hugo version using Blogdown as well. So these are just some sort of helper functions. Um, and you might want to go ahead and just in your, um, in your console that you're working in, you might just want to go ahead and make sure that library blog down is loaded. Um, I've tried to give you, um, remind you that we're working in blog down with the, uh, the prefix there. But uh, some of the scripts are obviously contingent on having you have the blog down package loaded. Uh, is everybody good with this? Everybody have Hugo installed? Because that's kind of a bigger install that hopefully you all have done beforehand. OK. So you will have to have, oh, sorry, yes? I'm sorry? Oh, yes. Here you go. My GitHub username is Aprez Hill, and then it's the blog workshop repository. So it's at the top of my repository list. So if you go to my GitHub repositories, and then it's right there. And then if you do clone or download, you should be able to access all the files that you'll need. I'll leave that up for a second and make sure everybody has it set. Everybody good? Okay. 
If you need me to go back, or you actually have a copy of these slides now, if you've downloaded, if you've gotten as far as getting the repository, you have the HTML slides that I'm working from, so you can uh, load those up and go back in time if you need to. So I want to just go ahead and start and make a site. Um, there are three ways to change make a site um, in R. Um, I'd like for us to start with creating a new R project because that's the easiest thing to bundle it all together in one project. So um, hopefully you guys are all working from the R Studio IDE. Um, so create a new project by going to File, New Project, New Directory. And if you're working from an R Studio recent build, you might have the interface that I have here where when I pick Create Project and I pick New Directory, I actually have this option down here, Website Using Blog Down. Um, that's part of the new release of um, daily builds of our studio, I believe. So you may not have that option. It's okay for you guys just to click New Project also. So I'm going to go ahead and do that version. And I'm going to create one that I'm calling Our Ladies Workshop. And then create the project. So this is what, um, let's see, once you're in that workshop, or once you're in that uh, repository, does everybody have a new project? There's not really anything there, right? It's just like you're in it, you can turn in it by this upper right-hand corner. So whatever new project you created should be up there when you, after you've created it. Is it not looking right? Oh, okay, sorry, <laughs> okay. Oh, okay, okay, <laughs> you're giving me a gap look. Okay, um, so I'm just to go ahead and set up our project options here, um, and I'm gonna follow um, the advice in the blog down book for this. So if you click on build tools over there, um, so far since we haven't set up a blog down site yet, it doesn't really know what we're doing, but you can select website here under project build tools, and just, unclick both of those boxes. So project, build tools, website from the drop down. you can leave that um, browse window fine there and then just uncheck both boxes. And you can read more about why I'm doing this uh, if you want to in the blog down book, or in the, um, yeah, in the blog down book online, uh, you can see why it's recommended, but I'm not gonna dwell too much on it. Just set it up and click okay. Okay, um, and so this is uh, just showing you the screen that it would look like if you did have the most updated version of um, our studio. So you could have used the website using blog down and it would have made things a little bit quicker. But we're gonna go ahead and now build your site in blog down. So you should be, in your console here, you should be in your project folder, whatever you called it. Okay, and then you can either have library blog down already loaded or you can just type blog down new site. So you should see something pop up like that on my screen. Is everybody getting something? So you should see a lot of stuff happening down here in the console, right? Um, it says that it's building your site, and then it says serving the directory. Um, and then what pops up um, up here is just one of the RMD files that um, pre-populates from the example site. Um, and you can see like, I have my um, our studio uh, options set to be dark over here, so you can see that my viewer is like not super helpful. Um, you can click on this little uh, icon here to show a new window, and then that'll open the site in a browser. And that's usually what I do is I just keep that open the whole time I'm working, so I can better see the changes I'm making. And the thing that's important to remember is that um, at this point your console is blocked, and that's by design. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. But thus far, does everybody have? A website that looks like that, like a shell of something. So um, we just did the new site function. The other way you could do it is you could peruse the over 90 themes that Hugo offers, and you could install, you could make your new site after picking a certain theme. And the syntax for that is picking the username on GitHub and then uh, forward slash, and then, then the name of the theme. So you could have started with um, like the Hugo academic theme, Hugo cactus theme. You didn't have to start with the default theme, but if you don't put anything in there, then 
it starts with the lithium theme, which is kind of a nice starting point, and we're going to work with that one today. But you can always start fresh with a new website, starting first with a theme, which I didn't realize when I first started using it. I first installed with lithium and then started adding themes and installing them. But uh, just help you know that you can go either way. A third way to do it is just to change your mind. So if you installed using lithium, you can install a new theme on top of lithium. Um, and then you set these options the way you'd like. Um, I would usually set theme example true so that you can actually see the example site that comes loaded with each theme. And then update config, we'll see what the configurations file looks like. But every different Hugo theme has a different uh, layout for the configurations file, which basically structures a lot of the important parameters that, um, that flow into your site. So when you install new themes, just keep in mind that your configuration file will change. So if you put a lot of work into editing a configuration file for a certain site, you may not want to install a theme over it and update, update the configuration file just yet. So um, you can always play around with different projects. Um, and uh, right now, if you realize, like we're just obviously dealing with just a local website. Like what we're doing here in this serve site over here is just something obviously that doesn't exist anywhere online. It just exists on our computer for now. Um, so you can play around with this. You can create multiple different websites <laughs> that you can just view locally. Um, and that's kind of one of the best ways to learn, I think. OK, so I want to spend a few minutes exploring the site, because I think understanding the, um, the hierarchy of the directories in Hugo is really important. Um, so this is what my uh, demo uh, file structure looked like when Blogdown created my new site for me. So take a look in the folder that you created for, excuse me, for your project. And it should look like this. So you've got an archetypes folder. You've got a config.toml file. You've got content, data, index.rmd, layouts. You've got your R project file, um, static, and themes. Does everybody have something that sort of looks like this? Or it should actually look exactly like this, right? <laughs> OK. <laughs> OK. So uh, here's a link for you guys to explore later if you want the Hugo directory structure. Um, obviously, it looks a little bit different in Blogdown. We do have um, some additional uh, stuff going on in there. Uh, but for Hugo, these are the main files that are really important um, for the site. So uh, keep in mind what they are and what level you're at always, um, because this is sort of that you install, basically this file structure is replicated within the theme. Um, so you kind of constantly got to keep in mind the two different but parallel um, file structures, what you have in your project root and what you have as part of your theme. And we'll talk more about how you can um, uh, edit the site by not messing with the themes folder. So I do not recommend ever adding anything to your themes folder or changing it, but explore it to be able to see what's in there. Um, so one of the major themes in Hugo is that you want to override versus editing files. Um, so when you use a theme cloned, cloned from his Git repository, uh, in the Hugo documentations, they say do not edit the themes files directly. Instead, theme customization is a matter of overriding those templates made available to you in that theme. And this provides the flexibility of tweaking it while staying with the themes upstream. So the benefit is if the GitHub repository that hosts the theme that you are using gets updated, maybe there's a new feature or maybe there was a bug, you can always do a fresh pull and you won't lose all of your customization. So you always have to keep in mind what's kind of the base foundation of your site versus what edits you've introduced on your side. Um, so Take a look in your directory and note which folders are empty at the top level of your project. So um, not in the themes folder, but in the project root directory, your archetypes folder should be empty, your data folder should be empty, layouts should be empty, and static is empty right now. Does everyone have that? So think of folders, like why are so many folders? Um, but they're there to set up the structure for you to be able to customize your site <laughs> Uh, and they're all mimicking what's in your themes folder. So they allow you to override what's in the default themes. Hugo will uh, use what's in the theme folders first, but if it doesn't find, if, it, um, if that's all there is, it will render that. If it finds something in the project root directories, it will override what's in the theme directory. Um, and you probably automatically had uh, 
Blogdown serve the site for you. But this is a really critical part of Blogdown. Um, and you can see, hopefully in your RStudio version, you have an add-in where it says serve site. And I really recommend uh, getting familiar with that one and using it often. Um, you can also do it in the console, but um, I typically my workflow when I'm working in Blogdown is when I first get into my project, I go ahead and serve the site, and then I just leave it up and running while I make changes so I can see live what happens. And it will alert you to very critical things that you've maybe made mistakes on. So for example, one time uh, I was editing uh, one markdown file and I had an errant comma, I think. And I made like just such a small edit, but then I was saving it and I was getting ready to round the door and then I realized that serve site crashed and it said that there was, you know, it had like some kind of odd error that didn't exactly tell me what it was, but because I had just made such few changes, I was able to figure it out really quickly. So it's nice to always have that there um, up and running and then kind of verifying what you're changing. You can see it in real time. So even if you're working, um, eventually you might have a workflow where you're linking up to a GitHub repository and pushing to it and then deploying through, you know, maybe Netlify or some other um, uh, continuous deployment uh, mechanism. Um, I really encourage you to use the local serve site all the time uh, to see what's happening. Okay, um, and the way that serve site works is uh, based on live reload technology, which is black magic to me. Uh, obviously, the developers are uh, very skilled at making this, but basically, anything you make changes to in your project directory, if you edit and you save that file, it triggers a live reload. So if you make a change to uh, anything inside of a file, if you make a change to a file name, all of these things trigger a live reload. So you would see it reload in your viewer here, and then if you have it open in a browser, it would reload there too. So, um, so you can always see exactly what changes you made. Um, it does block your console by design, so you can see here that when I'm serving the directory, my R console is blocked. So you know, if I was kind of working on an RMD, you know, an R Markdown uh, blog post or something, and I wanted to test out whether something works, all you have to do is just hit the stop sign over here, it would stop serving the site, and then you can, you know, do your your R code, and it works fine again. Um, and then all you do to go back to it is serve site, and then it's back up for you again. Okay. Oops, and I lost my slides. Okay. Okay. So I want to start by editing our site, and this is where my numbering comes in. So in your workshop bundle file, um, we're going to be looking at the 01 folder. It's called images. So I want you guys to move that to your project directory uh, root static folder. So for me, Mine is Our Lady's Workshop. And I want to just basically copy this folder. And in this static folder, I want to paste it and then I'm going to get rid of the 01 dash so that it just says images. So you should now have in your static folder a subfolder called images that has two PNG files. Does everybody see that? Okay, so now we're going to kind of venture into the configuration file and see how we can use what we just uploaded and reference it so that we can actually see what it does in our actual site. So uh, open up your configuration uh, file and I usually use the um, the file viewer over here in our studio so that I can just stay in our studio the whole time rather than um, editing a text file and what I want you to do is I want you to scroll down and the very last lines of it you should have this uh, showing this params logo okay so this is um, one of the parameters that is specific to this theme so if you scroll up you can see kind of all of the initial front matter basically. There's a base URL, language code, the title of the site. Um, this is all pretty standard and usually exists across Hugo themes. 
Um, Menu Main is a part of Hugo, so they're using something that um, uh, exists within the Hugo platform to be able to call something Menu Main, and then there's a specific rendering for it. Um, then there's a param section, and that's really more where site-specific stuff comes in. So we'll change this later, we'll change some more stuff so you can see how the parameters work, but here in this theme, we have a field called params logo, and we have a URL, and you can see some other features that you could change too, but what I want you to do is change the title of that URL to our ladies, uh, our logo. So I'll type it here, our ladies, our logo, just like that. And then if you click save, and if you refresh your browser, uh, it should have, oops, it should have uh, automatically, and if you were looking at it, if you have a normal viewer that works here, you can see the little R showed up. So you can see where we used to have, um, it was like an orange LI for the lithium theme. So now we have like the little uh, R ladies purple R there in the circle. So that is just um, one of the parameters that you can change and mess about here. We'll, we'll tweak a few more, um, but is everybody looking at that kind of site? Everybody added a logo? Okay, um, so one thing that I wanna point out is if you, oh, sorry, did somebody say something? Oh, okay. Um, if you go to themes, and you go to the Hugo Lithium theme, and then does anybody remember where the um, where we put the images in? What folder? Static. static. So we can see there's a static folder in the Hugo Lithium theme, right? So if we click on that, we have images. Okay. Uh, we click on that, and that's where the original logo file was. Okay. So that's what was pulling originally. If you click on that, that's the the orange li, right? So um, it's really important to keep the, um, in this case, the directory is the same. So what Hugo is looking for is something in the static images folder. And it would use this as the default, but because we've put something in our project root static images folder, and we've specifically mapped it in our configuration file to tell it the URL, it's assuming right here that we're using our project root static directory. So we don't have to put the full path in here, it's assuming that we're looking in the static directory because that's where it looks in the theme directory. So because it looks in Hugo Lithium theme, static images, it says, okay, in the project root, is there something different in uh, static images and what's the path to it? And so you're telling it the path here. Okay, so did we learn something? I hope so. <laughs> um, so we saw that in themes, static images, logo.png could be overwritten by having something in your static images folder that we called our ladies dash r slash logo png. And that file name could have been anything, right? Like we didn't call it logo.png, you could have, um, but it doesn't matter because it's in the configuration file, we can actually tell it, hey, it doesn't have the same name. Now, if it didn't have something in the, par in the parameters specified in the configuration file, sometimes you have to do a little bit of spelunking and find what, what is the original file that it thinks it's looking for so, you know, if you didn't have this there, you would have needed to call it logo.png for it to load. But because we can specify it here, it's saying, okay, I'm going to look for that specific file, but in static images, not in themes static images. Okay, so here's a link on um, the Hugo website for customizing this, but it says this only works for templates that Hugo knows about, so that file convention for folder structure and naming. So if you have a theme that has template files in a creatively named directory, um, Hugo won't look for those first. So let's say in the list directory, images was IMG instead of images. We would have had to make sure that in our static folder, this logo was in an IMG folder. So it wouldn't have known that images is the same as IMG. So it's looking for the exact same folder structure that it looks for in the Hugo Lithium directory. It's just looking in a different project route. Okay, so number two, I want to change the about page. So if you look back at the website, you can see that uh, if we click on about, it tells you the just generic, this is a hello world example of um, uh, about the theme and how it was developed. Uh, so you've got a file called O2.md. So I want you to move that into your, your content folder in your project route.
So you may notice that there's already an about.im file, um, and that's what you're seeing rendered on the site right now. So I want you to delete that existing file. And then rename the one that we just moved there just to about MD so it knows what it's looking for. And because we made those changes, you should have an updated about page, which I especially populated for you, but it should look uh, nice. <laughs> it should have all the information about our ladies that you wanted to know about. Um, so did everybody get to the point where now if you have your site loaded in your local browser, you see a different about page than what was there originally? Okay, cool, great. Um, so now I kind of wanted to uh, make some basic configuration changes. So these don't have files that we're moving around. Um, but I want you guys to, in your configuration file here, the config um, we can uh, activate a few little things. Uh, so you might have noticed um, about site, uh, I have an about our site, and it says this website was built with heart using the blog down package. Now that is actually a short code for um, Hugo emojis, but we don't have emojis enabled in, in this uh, theme by default. So the way to do that in blog down is to add this enable emoji equals true into your configuration file. So I'm just gonna add it here. Enable, and then emoji, the E and emoji capitalize, and then there's an equals sign. So this is the Tomal language uses equals um, as opposed to YAML, which is kind of confusing people who might be coming from RMD world. Um, and then if you save that, you should notice that a live reload happened. And if I refresh in my browser, you should now have a heart instead of the, the word heart does everybody have a heart? <laughs> everybody has one? Okay. All right. Um, and so that's just an example to show you guys that sometimes um, a theme uh, doesn't necessarily give you basically like a, you know, a, a toggle, a way to tweak something, but it's a tweak that's there nevertheless. Um, so it's a little bit of a mission sometimes to figure it out. Like for, um, I knew for the theme that I developed my website on that emojis were enabled in Hugo but I didn't quite know that I could just add that field because I thought it wasn't in the configuration file originally. So it's important to know uh, that you can just kind of do some searches, um, but uh, you can add certain things, but you can't just add anything here. So this has to be a defined field that Hugo recognizes um, in this front matter. So enable emoji just happens to be one of those. Um, okay, so your heart should now be a heart. Uh, and then now I want to kind of play around with the main menu. So if you scroll down, you can see these menu.main um, entries in your configuration file. So these should look kind of familiar based on what you know the site looks like, right? Does anybody recognize them? Where do they, come, where do they show up on the site we have? The navigation bar, right? So we have an about, we have a GitHub, and we have a Twitter. Okay, so now we would like to exert some control over those things. So um, another thing that you should you can add, and this is based on what's available again in the menu.main options for Hugo, is that you can add weights to these. And I'm doing this because when we add um, meetups as um, an option instead of GitHub, it automatically resorts them. It's doing something I think based on uh, alphabetically, but I wanted it. No, it, it didn't do alphabetically. It switched Twitter to top for some reason. So you can play around with that. You can not include the weights here. You don't have to, but just know that you can include weights if you want to exert control over the order of these things in the navigation bar. So I'm going to add weight equals one to the about because I'd like to, that to be first. And then instead of GitHub, let's say that we want to have meetups as one of those uh, navigation bar items instead. So let me make my windows smaller here so you can see. So we keep the name field, but we just change it to meetups. So that's just the text that's gonna appear in the navigation bar. And then you can add the actual website for the meetup. Our ladies PDX. And then I put that as a weight of two, but again, you can leave the weights out. It doesn't matter. It's just an additional way to change things for you. And then Twitter, I changed the the Twitter to our lace PDX away from our studio. And then add a weight equals three. 
So if you save that, again, you should trigger a live read load, and everybody should now be able to see that we've got about meetups on Twitter, and if you click on them, the links should take you to the right places. So you should no longer be linking to GitHub from the middle one. It should link to your, your meetups link, Twitter, successful in changing the navigation of our inks. Okay. Um, so now I kind of just show you how to change uh, the CSS, so how to get a little bit more customization. Um, this is how to change some things like font and color, um, as well as kind of more involved things, like, you know, certain objects on the response when you hover over them. Um, so I did a CSS for you, so don't worry about actually doing CSS in here. Um, in your static, um, I want you to create a new directory. So right now I have images and post as two folders in my static, so I'm gonna create a new folder and call it CSS. And now, can anybody guess why I have to call it CSS? Other than that it's not, like, it needs to be a CSS file, but <laughs> like, where, where, where else would I find this information if I don't have it in my static folder? Yeah, so if you go to themes, Hugo Lithium theme, static, there's a folder called CSS. So remember, we're always ha having to map and override what's in that folder, or add on to it in this case. So in this case, it's going to read what's in the CSS that's the main CSS uh, file, and then we're going to tweak it a little bit, and then it's going to read my custom CSS on top of that file. So you should now have a static directory that looks like this. CSS is empty. And now, since we're on edit number five, take your 05-rladies uh, CSS file and move it in there. And then I want you to remove the 05 dash, gesundheit. Um, so you should just have a file called ladies.css in that static CSS folder. Okay, so now it's just there. We're not referencing it yet, so we have to go back to our configuration file, and we want to add a line under our parameters here. Okay, so scroll in your configuration file down a little bit. You should see params and there's a description. And underneath there, and it really doesn't matter where it is, it just needs to be under the parameters section, so that does matter. So anywhere under parameters, you can type custom CSS, and then in brackets and quotes, CSS, our ladies, dot CSS. So if you remember when we did our logo, I didn't specify a folder because it knew it was looking in static images. Um, here, we just created that directory, we just created the CSS folder within static, so we're telling it, look in static, also look in the CSS folder because you don't know it's there. We're telling you it's there, and then uh, find the rladies.css file, okay? So at that point, you should have triggered a live reload, and everybody should be looking at a little bit more purple page, slightly different font. Is everybody seeing a page that looks a little different like that? Oh. And then, so how did I know about the name of this parameter? <laughs> this one is a little bit tricky. Um, so it depends on the theme that you're in. So the, um, the academic theme, for example, when I originally made my website, had a special field within the configuration file that said, hey, specify your custom CSS here in brackets and quotes, and then it was really easy. Uh, the lithium theme doesn't come with that. So how did I know to call it custom CSS and not do custom underscore CSS or custom capital C CSS? So you have to go spelunking a little bit here in the file directories again, but can anybody guess where you should be looking? Themes. And then this is kind of tricky, but you have to go to the layouts. This is the first time we've ventured into this folder. So in most themes, you'll have a default folder and a partials folder. The partials is really um, the things that map onto the things that you recognize in the website for the most part. So you see like a nav.html, so that's obviously the navigation bar. We have a header, um, we have a footer. Um, so this is where you can start opening them up and seeing what it's 
what it's trying to do, what it's pulling in from the configuration. Um, so this is actually in the head HTML. So if you open up head HTML, you can take a look, and this is going to be a little bit of gibberish for you if you're not uh, super familiar with these types of files yet. But once you've been playing around with blog down a little bit and you play around with a few different themes, this will kind of become a little bit clearer. Um, everything in these curly brackets um, are um, variables that are defined with Hugo. Um, but you can kind of scroll down and you can see where the style sheets are. So this should look somewhat familiar if you're familiar with using CSS at all. So we've got like a link for a style sheet and it's linking to CSS slash font CSS and then CSS uh, slash main CSS. So these were the main and the fonts um, CSS files that were in the original theme, right? So in the Hugo Lithium theme, it's referencing static CSS fonts, static CSS main. Um, and then you can see down here, it says, oh, look, if there's something in site params dot custom CSS, then reference that. And this little dot is kind of a placeholder for that, and it's essentially pulling in, in addition to these other CSS files, it's pulling in a custom CSS. So that's how I knew that what it was looking for was something in my, when you see site parameters, that's something that's specified in your configuration file. So when you see that, you know, okay, it's under the parameters in my configuration file, and what it's looking for is a field called custom CSS. So it needs to have custom CSS equals something. Um, and the way you specify for the most part, these kinds of fields is using these brackets and quotes. Um, and that's just sort of something that you get used to as you're working with. <laughs> it's kind of one of those, sorry. <laughs> I wish there was a little field that said like, hey, enter it in brackets and quotes to make life easier, but uh, you can still do it. So an another example of how when we added like what's to the main menu, we added enable emojis, and now we've added a custom CSS. So you can. You, you should know it's possible to do and then how to figure out how to do it. But every theme is gonna be different. Some are way user friendly and they'll have like all these different options and knobs you can turn, things that you can change and others are more bare bones. So this is kind of one of those nice default um, themes where it gives you everything you need and nothing more than you need. But if you wanna start tweaking it, you need to kind of do a little bit of extra work. Okay, so hopefully everybody is looking at a purpleified, our ladies -ified uh, website now. You've got uh, your logo still. Um, you have the menus that we putz with a little bit. So we've got about, meetups, and Twitter. And now I wanted to show you how to add font awesome icons. Now you can, there's two ways to do this. You could have added them locally. I'm not going to suggest you do that here. I'm giving you a script already in the file that I gave you that will load them, um, will, that will call them in, but you could certainly change it to be a, a local font later. But I've given you a font awesome min CSS. Um, so it's titled with the six. So now hopefully you know the drill. I've got all the files prepended with digits and dash. You can go ahead and remove those, but move your font awesome min.css to your static CSS folder. So I'm going to do that with you. So under workshop folder, and it's uh, it has 06A, just so you could keep track of the order of things, because this step is going to take three, uh, three little mini steps along with it. So it's static, CSS, so we already have ourladies.css in here, and now we want to move our font awesome CSS in, and I'm going to remove what I prepended before. Okay, is everybody good with that? So now, again, you just have the CSS there, but we need to figure out how to reference it, right? So it's, it's now there in your directory structure, but you're not referencing it anywhere, so your site isn't using it yet. So we wanna create a new directory, and this is the first time we're gonna play around with the layouts directory. There's nothing in there, right? So it's a totally empty thing. It's pulling everything from layouts from your themes, themes, Hugo Lithium theme layouts folder. Um, so let's take a look at what's going on in the themes first, just so you know what the layouts folder looks like. So there's this underscore default, and then there's this partials folder. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna play with the partials because I wanna put my font, I font awesome icons in the navigation bar. And the way I wanna do that is I wanna edit this um, navigation HTML. But it's actually gonna take two steps because we need to reference the CSS for font awesome. So I am putting that in a head custom file. Um, so if you open up this head custom file, that's in the Hugo Lithium theme, it's empty. There's nothing there. 
it's more of a placeholder just to let you know it's possible to do. So um, you could potentially make edits to that file, but again, you don't want to really make changes in your theme folder. So you should go back to your, your project root layouts, and then let's create a new directory in there called partials. And then if you go back to my workshop bundle, there's those two files that have the 06-B in front of them. They're head underscore custom and nav. And so those are matching exactly the names of the files that um, were existing in the Hugo Lithium theme. Um, so I'm not changing the names of the files at all. I'm trying to override what was already there. So I'm going to copy those, and in my workshop, layouts, partials, paste those two items, and then remove the, the letters and numbers so that you just have head underscore custom and nav. OK. So I want you to also just open these up. Um, you can open up. Head custom first, that's the simplest one. So all this has in it is just one line, and it's the script from Font Awesome showing, um, uh, basically I, I am giving you all the link that was sent to me. You have to put in your email address, so, uh, so I'm just sharing that with you. But if you wanted to do this on your own website, you could go to the Font Awesome site, enter an email address, and then it sends you a custom link that you use a script in here. So I just added that to head underscore custom, and Hugo recognizes that now, oh, there's something in a head underscore custom file. So it reads that in for us. And then if you open up the nav HTML, that's a little bit more involved. And you don't have to understand everything in there right now. But I didn't make many changes to it. All I did was add a little field for um, having the font awesome icons show up. So um, here. If you remember, everything in the curly braces are variables from our configuration um, .toml file. And so you know that .site means it's from the configuration file, and then menus mean. Um, so if you remember, we had those three menu items. There was about, uh, meetups, and Twitter, right? So we had those three items in the menus main, and that was how the navigation bar. So this is basically iterating over those things. So it's saying everything that's labeled as menus main, the range of those things go through it. And it has the, um, a call to what's in the URL field. So look back at your configuration file. And you can see it's saying, OK, the URL field is here. And this confused me at first that it's in all caps compared to lower caps. I cannot explain this. <laughs> and I do not think it's necessarily uh, interesting to know. <laughs> I'm sure there's an explanation for it. Um, but you might notice, for example, that menus main, the, the first M is capitalized, whereas over here it's not capitalized. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, good call. I think that might be part of the range thing. But, I mean, clearly. Mm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, but apparently you don't need to have recognized that for it to work, because it does um, so, and then what I did was I just added this little I um, uh, section here. So I added a class, and then I added in um, the, basically the syntax for how you reference Font Awesome icons. So if you're not familiar with those, don't, don't worry about it, but their website shows you really quickly how the Font Awesome icons are used. And then you can kind of make more sense of what this code is here. But I just wanted to show you basically why I'm giving you this, this file the way I did, <laughs> rather than making you type it in, because it's not necessarily uh, educational to do, but this is just how you reference the font awesome icons. But the interesting thing to remember is that everything in curly braces is a variable that you're pulling from that configuration.toml file. Right? So URL is being pulled, pre is being pulled, and name is being pulled. So, so far, we have currently in our configuration file, we have name and URL, but we don't have a field called pre. And so that's what we actually enter. So in your configuration file, that's actually one of those different things you can get to show news and object is a pre-field. So for each of these, type pre equals. And then for about, I couldn't really find a font awesome icon that made sense. If you find one, you're welcome to enter something there. Um, for meetups, there was a very clear one. And the way that you reference it is fa-meetup. 
And for Twitter, there was one that was very obvious, FA-Twitter. So all we're entering here is the name of the icon, and then you can see kind of how it works. That what we just entered in that pre-field is being basically pasted in to this syntax here. So it's going to vary for every single menu main item. It's going to call a different uh, font awesome icon um, into the file. So that's all you need to do. You don't really need to do any changes to nav HTML. I just wanted you to look at it. You did make the changes to the configuration file. Oops. Oops. Okay. Um, and then the only other thing to do after you make those changes is back down. Remember, we had that custom CSS where we entered the rladies.css, and now we just want to add another one. Because if you remember, we added a font awesome CSS file, and we need to reference it here. It knows where to find it. So you just put a comma and enter the name of that file here so that it knows where to look for the font awesome CSS file. And then once you do that and hit save, you should have some pretty awesome little icons that pop up in your navigation bar. And because you've loaded it now, you could use font awesome icons anywhere. They don't have to be in the navigation bar. They could be used in um, any kind of markdown file. Um, you could use them in your about page, for example. Um, you could use them anywhere, just as long as you know the syntax for using them. Uh, you can use the HTML um, syntax. Any, any markdown file can accept that and render those. But that's how you would add them to the navigation bar. Um, and it's useful to know that there's a pre variable here. So you can't just add, for example, like icon equals fa-meetup. It needs to be something that Hugo recognizes. So pre is a defined field, again, that wasn't already populated in this theme, but it exists. And it's good to know if you want to make those changes. Okay. So does everybody have awesome icons in their navigation bar? Okay. And then everybody also has icons anywhere else that you would want to use them if you wanted to. Um, so the last thing I wanted to do was um, show you guys how, how to basically uh, remove posts. Um, so one of the primary reasons you're using Blogdown is probably so you could do posts that are um, in our markdown format, which are the ones that are automatically added here. You've got a hello, our markdown blog post. Um, but you may not want to do that. You may just want to build a site in R and not have to do a blog necessarily. Um, and certain people have strong opinions on blogs. I know uh, uh, Iwe has a blog post where he, said, he has a little footnote that says basically, uh, nobody reads blog posts anymore, so it's kind of useless to do them. But actually, it's probably good for you to do them anyways. <laughs> it's a good thinking exercise. So uh, whether or not people read them, you are welcome to have a blog. But if you don't want to have a blog, you could still use blog down to make a site. Um, and we can just easily not show these posts um, and move them around a little bit. So let's say maybe you just didn't want them as the main landing page. Because here right now, when you first go to the website, the thing that's on display right, is these posts. So you would think that this theme might be just for blogging, but it's not. You can definitely change it. So let's make a landing page, like a home page, and we'll move the posts out of the spotlight for a little bit and play with that. So uh, we have a new file that is not actually existing in <coughs> our Hugo Lithium theme. So if we go to Hugo Lithium theme, uh, if you look under layouts and partials, there's no index.html. Um, this is a special category of things in, um, in Hugo. But I gave you an index.html in the workshop bundle. So check that one out, it's 07, index.html. So make a copy of that. And we want to move it to layouts. And the key to this is not to move it into that partials folder that we already made, but just move it to layouts, um, not in a subdirectory. And then remove the 07 dash so that you just have an index.html. Is everybody there? OK. So now we need to tell the configuration file what's happening here. Um, so I am going to suggest that we add a little bit to the description and the chapter. And that's because I know what's in the index.html. But let's go ahead and open it up and show you what uh, what it's expecting. So it's expecting it's already got a logo, um, a wide logo that's in here. Um, but then you can see, remember, everything in curly braces is a variable from our configuration file. 
So it's looking for something called site params chapter. Okay, so that's something that I have made up that is not currently in your configuration file, but remember under parameters, I can add something here. Okay, um, so chapter is not a defined variable in Hugo world, but it is for maybe an R Ladies site. So I'm going to create a variable here called chapter, and in quotes, I'm going to put Portland, Oregon. And then you're welcome to change the description if you want. Uh, you don't have to change it to everything here, but you can just make it Our Ladies PDX is exciting. Okay, so now when you look back at index.html, I'm gonna push this over here so you can see what's happening. Um, when you look at index.html, it means that this um, particular layout for the landing page is going to have a logo the wide logo, and we're not specifying that in the parameters, I'm, I've just set it, so it's, um, it's set already. Um, but then it is pulling a variable in from our configuration file that is the parameters chapter variable, and it's also pulling down the site parameters description variable. And so that you already had, but you could have changed it if you wanted to. I think it said previously a, a website built with Hugo and blog down. And so you can change that, and you can see this little command here is markdownify, so it's gonna recognize markdown syntax. So that's why, in this configuration file over here, I could do the link this way, um, just using Markdown. Um, so if you save your configuration file, you should trigger a live load, and you should have a very different first page. Does everyone have that? Um, in my slides, I have this uh, information for you so you can see more about like the special uh, Hugo treatment for your home pages. Um, but it tells you essentially the lookup order for the, for the home page template. So it looks first in layouts, index.html. And now there wasn't actually one of these files in the Hugo Lithium um, theme, but we added it into our layouts file, but it's not looking in partials. So we were previously changing the navigation bar in partials, um, and I think we changed head underscore custom as well there. Um, but uh, index.html just does not exist in the partials. It's one of the main uh, files. So you just have to know basically where Hugo wants to look for the file and then show it to it there. Um, and, so it, and it needs to be titled index.html as well because that has a special standing with Hugo. So that means that it's looking for a home page. Okay. So does everybody have a new landing page? All right. Uh, so the last edit is you want to get your posts back, maybe. So maybe you didn't want to do away with them because you're using Blogdown after all, and you probably wanted to have our Markdown uh, capabilities and be able to have like a blog post where you have a GG plot that's really pretty, and you can have your HTML widgets. You can do all the cool things that you want to do in an R Markdown file, but you want to be able to share them with people on your website. So how do we get them back? Um, and maybe we just don't want them to be our landing page, right? Maybe they, we don't want them to be our home page, but we want to have them back. Um, so in your configuration file, where you see the menu main, all you need to do is add um, one more menu main item. Now I called my news, I made uh, an icon for it, the bullhorn from Font Awesome. So if you remember, that's the pre-equals is our Font Awesome icon. The URL is something that is specific and it matters. So it can't be posts, plural, it has to be post. And that's because if you look in your root content directory, you've got a folder already there called post, okay? And this is where it automatically looks for all of your posts. So it's really important not to have that pluralized um, because uh, if I'm disclosing everything when I did this, I couldn't get it to load. <laughs> and it's because I had it pl pluralized, so remember that. It's a good lesson. So I'm gonna add mine. I'm gonna give it a wait for so that it's at the very end. I'm gonna call mine news font awesome, bullhorn, and then instead of an external URL, you just have to do forward slash post forward slash, and then it goes and looks in that post directory. And if you scroll up, you can see that it's looking in uh, a similar way for the about.md file. So now if you save that, you've got a live reload triggered, and then now you should see your little news icon at the top, and if you click on it, you've recovered all the posts that were originally in our, on our landing page, they're all still there. So they were there the whole time, they were there the whole time within that post um, directory, you just didn't have a link to it 
um, when we changed what the index.html was. Okay, so does everybody have a news with whatever font awesome icon? Everybody recovered their posts, so they're still there. Okay, so the last thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to deploy your site. Um, and the best way to do this is uh, with GitHub integration. Um, so I'm not going to go through all of the steps to it, but I'm gonna give you an overview and show you some resources for how to do it. Um, I recommend Netlify, I follow uh, Iwe. Um, he says uh, in his own blog, consider Netlify, uh, GitHub pages is dead, long live Netlify. Um, and he makes a really nice convincing argument for it. Um, and uh, when I first tried to learn blog down, I decided pretty early on that I was just gonna take like every recommendation that he gave me in the blog down book because I didn't want to learn about like static site generators and continuous deployment. I just wanted it to be easy. I was actually terrified of this step. I thought Netlify was gonna be like really hard to work with. It's incredibly easy. Uh, I recommend that you do not open a new account in Netlify. You can just log in with your GitHub account and then it's linked uh, easily from the start. And you go to netlify.com and it has a really nice free, so it's free, <laughs> it has a really nice free pricing plan. So I log in, I've got it linked up with my um, GitHub repositories and you could click new site from Git and then it gives you a listing of all the repositories that you have. So I click on GitHub and you can see all the repositories I have and I could pick any one of these to deploy with Netlify. And once you do that, let's see if I, uh, I think I already have this one. Oh no, I don't have the uh, demo one that I did. Here's the blog down workshop. Okay, so here is, uh, is I'm linking it up to my blog down workshop materials. I'm picking the master branch, and then the build command is sort of specific. It's Hugo underscore zero one nine. Um, and this is actually an older version of Hugo than what is probably available um, through Blogdown, but this is the most, at least last time I checked, the most up-to-date version that Netlify offers. Uh, Eway gives you instructions in the Blogdown book for how to uh, command it to use a more recent build, like I think it's up to like .24 version or something. I haven't had a problem with doing the basic thing and I didn't wanna build out something um, specific in Netlify because I wanted it to be easy but you do type hugo underscore 019 for it to work. And in the published directory, we haven't talked about yet, but if you go back to your um, original file structure, you'll see you have this public folder here. Um, and this is in your project root directory, you have public, and it's essentially uh, rendering your site using this public folder. So you could have just um, dragged and dropped that public folder into Netlify, and it would have used that to publish from. Um, as it is, you tell it the published directory, you tell it public and hopefully you haven't messed with that. Um, I would never manually change anything in your public directory. It's all automatically pulled from the other um, parts in, uh, in Blogdown that you've already edited. So the public directory is mainly for this deployment. It's not for editing, it's not for um, changing around. And then I'd click deploy site. So you can see running build command And you can see it generates a unique um, website for you, which is always fun to see. So I have had, uh, what was my first one? I think my first one was uh, Garbage Collector Janice. Um, and then my second one was Undertaker Rebecca, which I feel like, I feel like those are like characters in a, you know, <laughs> a buddy film of some type. Um, so this one is Jeweler Pamela, okay? Um, and apparently my site has not been deployed. There's some problem, I'm sure, that I've uh, done incorrectly, but uh, let's see, let me make sure that I've got, everything looks like it's working here. Um, and of course this worked when I did it earlier, but, um, oh, it's because I haven't uh, actually pushed. So, um, and I haven't done the GitHub inter integration yet, so that's why it's not working. Um, so let me show you what it looks like for my personal website. Um, so you can see the deploys here. So you can see every time you push to GitHub, 
uh, you can log on to Netlify and it'll immediately show you what, that it's deploying. Um, the only times I've ever had something not deploy and publish is when I made a mistake and didn't serve site first locally and make sure that it actually rendered. Um, so uh, it's it's pretty um, pretty sensitive, obviously, to that. If something if it won't work locally, your um, your Netlify deployment is not going to work. But you can see that my, my most recent um, uh, push was published here. Um, and you can look at the deploy settings where I've synced it to the repository, but then you can also go to domain management, and that's how you would set up a different domain. So originally, like I said, I had um, garbage collector Janus, um, and I went to change domain, and you could change it um, to something else, .netlify.com. So you're, it's still within the Netlify domain. So for example, my Our Ladies PDX is still under it's still under our ladies uh, dash pdx um, dot netlify. So if I go to our ladies pdx netlify .com, that's where my website is living right now. So as soon as I open that our project and I push to GitHub, it updates to um, to this website. Um, you also have other options. Um, so again, change the netlify site name. Um, so that you're not stuck with Undertaker Rebecca. Jeweler Pamela is not too bad, but um, you can actually request a subdomain through our bind, um, which is uh, something through our studio. And I really recommend it just as a community in general on GitHub. A lot of people have transferred, um, including myself, we've transferred our um, repositories from building our websites to our bind. Um, you can still make changes to it. You have all of the authority that you wanted to before, but now there's a list. If you go to the our bind um, GitHub site, you can see all the different websites that people have built with Blogdown, and it's a really great way to learn, see how people have tweaked themes, um, and you can actually see the rendered site and then see the materials that went into it. So once you start kind of getting more used to Blogdown and the syntax, it's a really great way to learn how people have uh, tweaked things to personalize them. So let me show you real quick where that is. So if you go to our bind, um, all of these repositories here have been transferred there. So you can see everybody's individual website. Um, some of them are really, really amazing. Um, like the Rcast is a, um, an R uh, podcast, and they have a really interesting website design with a kind of unique Hugo template. Um, so you can see a number of different examples um, and see what went into them. And for example, simply stats from the um, Johns Hopkins uh, data science group, they've switched uh, to blog down so you can see all the inner workings of how all these different sites work. Um, and for example, for Our Ladies PDX, I requested a subdomain for them through our bind so that then the website is ourladies-pdx.rbind.io. Um, so then Netlify will forward to rbind.io. So if you wanted a domain that's not um, netlify.com, that's an option that's free and it's a really great way to contribute to the community and help other people learn blog down at the same time. Um, and the only thing that you need to remember for your subdomain request, you might look uh, at, the, at the support where you go to file an issue. Um, a lot of people don't provide the information that uh, eWay needs to do this. What he needs to know is what your subdomain is via Netlify. Uh, and then what you want it to be for rbind.io. So really just two pieces of information, um, and I, I give you an example one there, and I think he did it within like six hours usually, um, so he's pretty fast about it. So um, I told him that I'd like to request an rbind subdomain for Our Ladies PDX. Here's where it lives on Netlify. Can we have ourladies-pdx.rbind.io? Um, and then the final edit, uh, once you do that, once you decide where you want your site to be deployed, is to um, change your configuration file again. So you can see this base URL is just a, excuse me, a forward slash right now. So you'll want to change that to wherever your actual base URL is. So sometimes you might have, um, you might go to your website and it's not working, and it's because uh, you haven't set up your base URL yet. Um, and then on Netlify and domain settings, you need to go to custom domain. So let's see, do I still have Netlify open? Here's where you go to custom domain, and then so I would enter my rbind domain name in there. And then once you do that, you should be in business. Um, there's a ton more resources. I've given you links. Um, there's a blog down demo that I put together um, for the book that gives you um, some examples of our markdown posts. So we have um, adding citations to posts. So you can do citations just like in Bookdown using um, uh, bibtex files. 
um, show you how to do references, um, and then um, one uh, one thing that Iwe added at the sort of end of um, the blog down development cycle before he published a CRAN was the ability to add our markdown documents of other output formats. And this is actually really clever once you start getting into blog down. Sometimes you might have a site where you're really dependent on a bootstrap theme that you like or some other bootstrap elements that you're used to using in our markdown file. Um, I, for example, have a lot of like tutorials built around having like, you know, the flatly theme and then the tabbed sections and all these things that are not available in blog down. Um, so if you want to have an RMD file that's uh, rendered not in the uh, blog down HTML page format, which is the default, um, you can follow these steps. You have to add one script in one directory, uh, and then you're able to have RMD files that are not, um, that are any kind of uh, output format that you want. So uh, you might find, for example, the slides that I made um, for this, those would not be rendered correctly with blog down. They need to be rendered using um, a package and using um, uh, an output, I think from, uh, it's called like Moon Reader or something like that. So it's not going to render correctly with blog down. Um, and adding HTML widgets also to our markdown posts. So you can see how you can embed like something from the data tables package or something from Plotly so you can have interactive graphs. So all the kind of neat reasons why you might want to do blog posts in our markdown. Um, we have examples there for you to play around with. And let's see. Um, oops. You can view the actual demo site here at Netlify. Um, I have a blog post where I talk a lot more about posting, so if you want to know how to do that um, in more detail, the main key that I think to remember is in order to do posting, you have to stop serving the site in order to do it. Um, so it's a little bit um, of a learning curve there. And then um, I want to thank uh, Iwe, our studio, for the awesome package because it's actually really fun to work with. Um, and I hope you enjoy learning about it. If you haven't delved into it so far, hopefully you maybe are tempted now to develop your own site for yourself or for a class or for a project. Um, I really enjoyed being a co-author on the blog down book with uh, Iwe and Amber. Um, the Arbine support group is really amazing. Um, if you just uh, post in their GitHub issues, there's amazing help there and people do it just out of the goodness of their hearts. Um, so you will often find just uh, people that you might recognize like from the R podcast who are responding to your support issue and they'll really walk you through um, how to fix something if something's not rendering properly or if you're confused about something. Um, and then I wanna thank the R ladies organizers because uh, it was fun to have a demo thing and I wanted to have one where it was uh, not clear that you wanted to have a blog so uh, thank you for letting me use you guys as a guinea pig so um, I'm happy to stick around for a few more minutes if anybody has any specific questions but that was all I have Thanks.